Welcome back to Knockout Arcade, an upcoming 2D retro pixel art fighting game. The team and I are proud to present yet another semester of progress on the game, and we've got some crazy new additions to show y'all. Most of the team this time around was brand new, with only a handful of returning devs. We're excited to show off the past three months of work, so without any further introductions, let's rock! Let's begin with all the new mechanics we've implemented. For starters, we finally have a use for the super meter at the bottom of the screen. The meter builds up as you deal and take damage, and you can spend the meter to do a couple of strong actions. The first thing you can do is enhance your specials. Enhanced specials are actions that the player can input during a special move, and it can alter the move's properties or add extra attacks. To do an enhancer, you must execute a motion input during the duration of the special move. The exact motion is different for different moves. For example, Russell's neutral special can be enhanced with down, down forward, forward to get a launcher, setting up for high damage combos. Veteran fighting game players will call this a quarter circle forward input, or simply the Hadouken motion. Enhancers cost 25% of your meter to use, so you need to think carefully about whether you want to spend the meter now, or save it for later. Each special move has a different input, and some specials don't have inputs at all, such as Russell's up special. The programming for motion inputs was all done by Colin Strouch, who has done a lot of work on some other mechanics, as well as keeping the character editor up to date. The next major mechanic we added was the rush cancel. By pressing run and special at the same time, players can cancel whatever action they were just doing and initiate a run towards the opponent. This allows you to get extended combos off of stray hits and adds a lot of creativity to combo structure. You can dash forward by simply doing the input on the ground, you can do a jump by holding up during the flash, and if you perform the rush cancel in the air, you can fast fall straight to the ground. The rush cancel costs 50% meter, so it's quite expensive and you need to plan out your meter usage carefully. You can't build more meter if you use an action that spends meter during a combo, so be sure to spend it wisely. I look forward to seeing some of the crazy combos players have to come up with. The last feature to involve the meter are super attacks. By pressing the M key on the keyboard for player 1, the 5 key on the numpad for player 2, or by using the left bumper if you're on a controller, you can perform a super attack. Each character has one basic super that they have access to, and they are generally very strong attacks. The supers we have right now are placeholders, and we plan to implement the actual supers for Russell and Beverly sometime in the near future. We'll get to Jay's supers when we talk about his mechanics. Supers also cost 50% meter, so you have the choice between confirming into super or trying to use a rush cancel. And if you have 100% meter, you can even try doing both in the same combo. But that's not all. We've also implemented lots of different features regarding character movesets. Characters can now have command inputs, rekkas, and can even switch to entirely different movesets. We also added wall bouncing, which is where the opponent splats on the wall and bounces off when getting hit by a strong attack, among several other small quality of life changes to help make the gameplay smoother. As far as sweeping gameplay mechanics go, that's everything we implemented so far, but we aren't done with some character specific changes, so let's revisit each of the characters to see what changed. Starting off with Russell, most of his base moveset is now complete. He has a fully finished up special, which slams the opponent back into the ground, and he has a new down special, which acts as an overhead attack. His neutral, side, and down specials all have enhancers associated with them as well. Russell's enhanced neutral special causes him to perform an uppercut that launches the opponent. Input down, down forward, forward while performing the special to get the enhancer. Russell's enhanced side special makes him do an extra flip kick to tack on damage. It is performed by inputting down, down back, back during the move. You can also try to hide the input by doing it as late as possible, that way your opponent can't react to it as easily. Russell's enhanced down special makes him do another very quick overhead slam. This can be used to mix up opponents by forcing them to block high a second time. This move is performed by inputting forward, down, then down forward. On top of his complete set of specials, Russell also has a new command normal. By pressing forward plus medium on the ground, Russell does a jumping attack that hits high. You can cancel this move into other specials to get conversions off of it. It's not as fast as this down special though. This move is a reference to Ryu's universal overhead attack from Street Fighter 3. All of the art for Russell was done by me, and some of Russell's normals have been tweaked slightly during the sprint. You can visit the patch notes on itch.io for some more specific details. Now let's move on to Beverly. She's got a whole suite of new animations to show off, all thanks to Bianca Magana. Most of her grounded moves have complete animations now, and all of her specials have placeholders in. Her side special in particular has been completely overhauled. Beverly now has a Rekka series that she can perform by pressing different directions. Pressing up in the special button during her side special allows her to perform an overhead, and pressing down in special is a low. She can press back in special to perform a launcher, 
though the opponent needs to be very close in order for that to work. On top of all that, she has a new aerial command normal in down plus medium. This is her signature dive kick. It's a useful tool for controlling space, and she can do a super jump to gain extra height for it. We've also made a small change to how hitstop works, so now her projectile no longer causes her to freeze upon colliding with the opponent. There's still plenty of work to do, but for now, Beverly's moveset is all there in its basic form. Our next character has a brand new mechanic associated just with him. Please take a look. Ay, 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 ay. That's right! Thanks to Colin Strouch once again, Jay now has a fully functioning spirit mechanic. By pressing neutral special, Jay can summon his spirit, Smooth Criminal, to fight alongside him. Jay's improved sprite was done by Caitlin Nazar, and the placeholder sprites for Smooth Criminal were done by Ian Spar. While in spirit on mode, Jay has access to an entirely new moveset thanks to Smooth Criminal, or SC as we like to call him. SC has access to fast and long range attacks, and you can even send him out by performing a quarter circle forward input during Jay's neutral special. This allows Jay and SC to sandwich the opponent, creating for some frantic pressure. The property of Jay's special moves all differ in Spirit On and Spirit Off, so you'll have to activate and deactivate SC depending on the situation. Smooth Criminal also has his own health bar, shown just underneath Jay's health bar. Whenever Jay or SC are hit in Spirit On, Jay's spirit gauge will deplete. Once fully depleted, Jay will become spirit broken, and he will be unable to summon SC again for a short period of time. This means that there's a lot of risk and reward to having Smooth Criminal out, as being too greedy and not recharging him may result in getting spirit broken. Jay actually has two basic supers, one for spirit on and one for spirit off. In spirit off, Jay's super allows both him and Smooth Criminal to attack simultaneously for a limited time. This boosts the duo's pressure, as it allows them to attack from multiple angles. And in Spirit On... Jay is a super fun character, and his spirit mechanic has lots of interesting utility. He still needs some tweaking and rebalancing, but the core functionality of the character is there. There's actually one more character that we included in this milestone. His name is Gunther, and he's a gorilla that works at the arcade. We don't have any official sprites of him just yet, but we do have a bunch of placeholders to allow us to experiment with his moveset. He's a grappler type character, and he'll have his own mechanic revolving around his command grab. You'll just have to wait and see what he's capable of. We're proud to announce that we finally have some sound effects and music in the game. In fact, the song you've been hearing in the background of this entire video has actually been the theme of the arcade stage. All of the sounds and music for this project was done by Zach Havel. We're still working on getting things to sound just right, but we're glad to finally have some sounds in the game after all this time. We also recorded some voice lines for the characters, but we haven't cleaned them up and put them in the build yet. We plan to add them in at some point in the future. We've got all kinds of sounds for jumping, whiffing attacks, walking around, etc. Like I said, the volumes of the sounds may be a bit off, since we're still trying to figure out exactly how the game should sound like. The UI also has some new sound effects. And speaking of UI... We actually went through and overhauled most of the menus in this game. The main menu features the reception desk of the arcade, and all of the same options from the previous builds are in this build. I also went through and created assets for the options menu, and the stage select. Players can now change the volumes and sounds and select whichever stage they'd like to play on, instead of having to remember a key combination. You can even pick a random stage. All these menus are complete with animations and sound effects as well. I want all of the menus in this game to be diegetic in some way to give this game more personality. There's a ton of small changes we made to the game engine to make the game feel better, and some of the game's controls even got updated. We also made lots and lots of changes to the character editor so it can support all of the features we want to add to the game. For specific details on everything that's changed, be sure to look at the patch notes on itch.io. 
Hello, my name is Ian Spar. I am the design lead for Knockout Arcade. What I've been doing is helping to make the design document for a new character Gunther, as well as making placeholder sprites for said new character and Jay as well. So our programmers can put functionality into those characters without needing to complete art assets. My name is Zachabool, and I am the composer and sound designer for Knockout Arcade. A large percent of the work I've done so far has specifically been on the sound effects side, trying to get general sound effects like hits in UIs to a good state before we move into specialized areas. But we do have implemented music for the arcade stage regardless. I hope you end up liking the unique sound Knockout Arcade has to offer. Thanks so much! My name is Colin Strauch, and I'm a programmer for Knockout Arcade. This semester I worked on motion inputs, rush cancels, smooth criminal, and supers. Data for all of those are in the character editor, as well as command normals, recos, moveset switching, sound data, and projectile data. I also worked on the trailers. That's everything we have to show for this sprint of Knockout Arcade development. We have so many cool additions this time around, and the project is really starting to take shape. I sadly won't be pitching this game to Production Studio again, but rest assured that development on the game will absolutely continue. I fully plan to finish this game and release it on Steam. But when that'll be, I have no idea. But with all the progress we've made, we're that much closer to having a completed fighting game. I plan to work more on the single player content next, as that's an area of the game we've neglected recently. The plan is for each character to have their own storyline through the campaign, lasting around 2-3 to three hours each. It's also a good way to introduce the player to all of the game's mechanics, and it'll offer some much needed content for people who just want to play the game by themselves. You can download and play the game right now on the itch.io page, the link for which is in the description. I cannot thank everyone enough for their support on this project. From my fellow devs to the viewers to the playtesters, thank you. And with all that said, thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time with another Knockout Arcade devlog!